Righty uh, this set off from Bundina. We're gonna walk to Waterfall train station along the coast track and up Uluru and Wilder tracks. I think that's its name. See how we go, looks like it's gonna be a nice day. Had some early morning rain, but that looks like it's long gone. So we'll just see how we go. Well, this is some new section of track they've put in since I've last walked. It takes you inland a little bit more away from the coast edge, from the cliffs. Don't know if it's done for safety or what, but it's all got that new raised footpath, foot track, whatever you want to call it. Very easy walking, no up and downs. Spoke a bit early. Tracks turned around, head back to the coast, went down some steps. Now heading down a gentle gradient back to the coast by the look of it. Interestingly, we just crossed back onto the older track and it's got like a steel galvanized mesh down as opposed to the new black recycled plastic stuff. And this, this mesh is very slippery. It's not, not much grip on it all in the scarper boots. Might be right in other shoes, but in the scarpers, it's very slippery. At the water run, and as you can see, there's a creek flows down from up in the gully up there. But what most people don't understand, no, there's actually a small dam up there. And you might wonder why is a dam here? Well, the dam was built during the Second World War when along the coast here, there used to be lots of observation posts to keep a look out for Japanese or the enemy, or whoever was coming to invade Australia. Anyway, up the top of the hill, up the top of the water run from Bundina, an area where some of the old locals used to call the sullage dump, because that's where they used to dump the sullage before there was sewer in Bundina. It used to be an old artillery station where they used to have a large cannon, artillery piece, whatever, and the other all the observation posts along the coast would give them the coordinates and that was supposedly how they would um, shell them. Yeah, so there used to be this network of lookouts along the coast, often right on the coast, the coast cliffs themselves. Some of them were converted into like fishermen huts. Some fell down when the cliffs eroded and some just disappeared, I have no idea. But when I was you know, first started walking out here many years ago. Especially around the Bundina end of the track. You couldn't walk anywhere without virtually tripping over copper wire. Because they had copper wire for the telephone lines, which used to run from the coast all the way up to the top of the, that hill where the, the guns were. And you might say, well, what happened to all the guns and everything? Well, according to the local in Bundina, after the war, the army gave them an option of leaving the stuff there or blowing it up. And apparently the people at Bundina decided they didn't want any memories of the war, so they wanted it blowing up. So they blew up a lot of the infrastructure the army built. And it's quite a shame because I can understand them not wanting to see, you know, be reminded of the war and what they've been through. 
but also started a bit of other history which affected the rest of the state and, and you can say it started in the Royal National Park or in Bundina. Anyway, if you go up that hill, you can go to the top, you'll hunt round, you'll find bits of the old bunker still there, all the concrete smashed. And just be aware, there's heaps of snakes there. It's interesting, I think that sign back there, that bloke from Westman coming up the wedding cake rock or something. I don't quite understand the attraction to that rock. I've never got it. The cliffs up near Watermulla are much more dramatic and a lot more stable. But hey, someone took a photo and went on Instagram so everyone has to copy. This is the infamous wedding cake rock. And for some reason, people on Instagram and other spots thought this is the best place in the world for photos. Anyway, just talking about history and stuff and Wedding cake rock and how people are doing dumb things for photos and stuff. Sort of remind me, because I'm an old fart and I can remember back to the days in film, you know, actual film that went in, 35mm film if you're using a 35mm camera. And there used to be a saying, don't have Kodak courage. Uh, little quails just running in front of me along the track. And, um, you know, it meant don't do something stupid for a photo. Now, regress. 2024, 23, I don't know, whatever year it is, I've got dementia, I can't remember. And um, now you have cameras like the systems like GoPro, which I'm filming this on, with GoPro, be a hero, encouraging you to go out and do crazy stuff. And you know, just how evolution, eh? Grand thing. Yeah, we've made it to Big Marley. There's two Marley beaches. Big Marley, which is this one, you can see here. And then we go around the rocks to Little Marley. Little Marley is always safer for swimming. But what's interesting, you can see it's pretty noisy here. It's not only from the sea, but it's also the aircraft. And if you've ever flown in the Sydney airport, there's a good chance you've flown over this beach. For some reason, they always come over Marley, go out, hang a left, and go into Sydney, in, in the Sydney airport mascot. That's where I've seen it from the air. Radio. Now made it to Little Marley. Has a nice little lagoon here as well. Not much water in it today. A lot of fishermen here. Some guy running along. Water mulling it somewhere. Lovely morning.
I'm over heading to Car Moors. This this track, it's bloody highway now. Don't know what this is all about. Certainly, big improvement since the last time I've walked this way. Once across the road, the track conditions gets worse. It's generally a lot more rougher and overgrown in a lot of sections. creeks near Lady Carrington Drive. Much better walking over here now, a bit more interesting bush than that coastal Sherpa stuff and out in the sun and the, the wind. Nice and shade here, had a nice cool off, had good lunch. Now just heading up to Five Island, Four Island, whatever they call it, and up to Waterfall. Much better walking here, more interesting. Oh well, it's made on the Larry Lady Carrington Drive. Gonna head up the car park and do the zigzag and up some hills to waterfall. It's always nice down here. Better in the morning, but still nice. Alright, we're off Lady Carrington. We're now on the forest path sort of loops around and goes back down the northern end of Lady Carrington. It's a nice walk, goes along a bit of the Port Hacking River, then back up to whatever the other creek's called, whatever I know. And that, so, a lot of cars around. Lady Wakehurst drives this city, so main, main drag through the park. We've got it down here for our turn off. She'll take us up to Waterfall Train. Oh, Waterfall Train Station. Fucking one too many shandies, worry. After crossing the Hacking River, you proceed up a small rise where you come to a T junction. Head downstream. This is turn to your right, otherwise you'll head back to the road. You can see the track up to Waterfall is all washed out. A bit of different from the coast track. Oh, well, we made it to Waterfall, completed the walk, made it in one piece. 